Hey, what's up, Husker fans? Here's my reaction to this Iowa game. It feels like a gut punch. A complete and utter gut punch. It's been hours now. I, I had to go to a family thing, and I had time to kind of sit in it. I listened to some of the call-in shows. I listened to Matt. Matt Rule's press conference, um, and it still stings terribly. And I know that uh, I, I'm, I'm merely preaching to the choir. If this is your first time here. My name is Logan Merrick. This is Husker Central. Uh, this channel is completely in dedicated to Husker fans like myself uh, who just love the Huskers. I'm not a journalist. I just love the Huskers, and I wanted to uh, create a place, a channel, where Husker fans could come together and commiserate and celebrate our Huskers. And today was a lot of commiserating. There was some celebrating. Did a live stream of the game and uh, had a lot of fans in the chat um, commiserating with me, celebrating with me. So, yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into it for this reaction video. Um, I'm going to do the, the the good and the bad. So before we, before we dive in, let's just kind of look at – we're going to go over and we will look at um, the – statistics um if you will let me get them in the right place there we go i don't know if you can see this really well but i'm going to go over here so if you look at it it's it's pretty even i mean both offenses were not tearing it up by any stretch of the imagination um total first downs they had 14 we had 10 rushing touch or rushing first downs they had six we had three blah 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 blah, blah. penalties um at one, we we had one. So rushing uh, total, they had one sixty three. We had seventy five. We did not, we did not do a good job running the ball today. There, and there's two things to that, which I will get get into in just a moment. And most of it has to do with the fact that one, I don't think we really stuck with the run very well. I don't think we did what was what is good, um, or what we're good at from the run. And also, two, they're a good they're a good rushing defense. I I went over that in my predictions video. Um, their average yard per rush was 4.1. Ours was 2.5. Let's go down to passing. They had 94 yards passing. We had 189. One thanks to the 66-yard touchdown by Jalen Lloyd, which is one of the good things. Um, average completion, there there was 8.5, eight and a half yards per attempt. Ours was 12.6. Total offense, very even. We had 264. They had two, uh, 257. They had 68 plays. We had 58 plays. Uh, average yard per play was 4.6 for us. Theirs was 3.8. I mean, it, it, the fact of the matter, what it came down to was turnovers. That's what it came down to. They had two fumbles, but they didn't, they didn't lose one. We had three, and we lost two. Punting, which I said would come down to a lot of – uh, punting Brian Buscini was not uh, too bad today. Um, they had they averaged forty two point four yards. Um, ours was forty yards, so it's very close. We pinned them within the one. That one it was it was a great punt, really good. Which we'll get into that because that was also that punt bailed out Matt Rule. If you heard the press conference, it really bailed him out. Well, he was going to do a terrible a terrible decision, which I'll talk about in just a minute. So, yeah, I mean, you, you just go through here. It's it, n nobody tore it up. Um, time of possession, they 31 minutes and 45 seconds. We had 28 minutes and 15 seconds. The whole thing was, for the most part, very, very close. Again, two good defenses, um, two bad offenses. I think the thing that makes this sting the most is off, is, is, Iowa, this, this is the game they play. And, but I think the thing that really frustrates me is th this is always the game that they play, and somehow they always pull them out. And this year, they, they were terrible. I mean, they were worse than they were last year, in my opinion. And we still couldn't, couldn't get the win. But I can't fault. Like, I, I can't come at Iowa. I can't throw rocks because we... Hear me, Iowa fan, who I know will be in the comments. That I'm, I'm, y'all be, we beat you. What are you talking? About? Yeah, okay. And it was not pretty. Um, and I'm not throwing stones from glass houses because the fact of the matter, we're not good. 
But the thing that is so frustrating right now is we're a fan base that want it really, really, really badly. And it just seems like we cannot get over the hump. It just seems like it's Groundhog Day every single time. Think about this. Chubba Purdy ended the last three games with an interception. Maryland, Wisconsin, Iowa. I don't even know what to say to that. But I don't want to be just doom and gloom the entire time. So let's let, let me let me talk about the good things and then I'll get into some more of the bad things. Good things. Young receiver stepped up. Uh Jalen Lloyd, he had one miss pass, but one bad uh pass that he didn't get. But man, 66 yard touchdown. Come on. Um Malachi Coleman had some great catches. Man, he had one when going across the middle, ball was thrown behind him, going down to the ground. The fact of the matter is on, on that, we've got some playmakers that are going to get, they're going to mature, they're going to get older. And so that's exciting. Um, we need a quarterback, man. I'll go into more of that later. Special teams. I said special teams had to step up if we were going to do, if we were going to be, if it was going to be close. For the for the most part, they did their job. Brian Buscini stepped up. Special teams had two blocked uh, kicks. Um, Tristan Alvano had one field goal and the other one was not even in the same zip code. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the, uh, the dunce cap on that one. I mean, it wasn't even, it wasn't even close and and we can talk about, oh, is the wind or whatever could have been, but I just think he completely just missed it. I think the wind made it look worse, but from the time it came off his foot, it wasn't even close, but supposed to be good things. Special teams. I think for the most part did their job. Uh, the young receivers, very much a bright spot. The defense did their job. And, and we could say, well, okay, the, the, the defense does this every time. They allow teams to go down and score when we need them the most. Okay, but at the same time, they gave they got an intercept. Tommy Hill got an interception. Less than a minute left. That's not on the I mean, the defense did their job. They got off the field. The offense goes right back out there, gives the ball right back. I cannot blame the defense for feeling gutted in that moment. All of us, all of us, fan base-wise, gutted in that moment. The defense is a very much a bright spot going into next year. I uh, found out uh, listening to one of the uh, one of the overtime shows, um, I think it was Husker Online that talked about Isaac Giffords coming back, uh, Nash Hutmacher coming back, Ty Robinson, as we know, is coming back. So we've got quite a few big pieces that are coming back, and so this defense will be stout again next year. We've got a lot of young freshmen that have just, I mean, shined. Cam Linhart, Riley Van Poppel, Prince Will Eumann Yellen. Prince Will... I think he had a, a, a pretty good game. He was held multiple times. That's one of the things that just drove me crazy. A lot of missed calls and what was up with the sinking re, uh, officials saying that that was not um, uh, targeting. That's not, I don't know what targeting is, I guess. Anyway, the defense very much a bright spot. Those are the only good things I can really think of. If you got other stuff. Definitely hit them in the comments. I don't want to leave them out, but it, right now it's like all I can think about is the gut-wrenching hard things. So let's look at the bad. Three turnovers. Two of them, two fumbles. Actually, no, there's, it's more than that because we had, oh yeah, three turnovers, but we had three fumbles technically, one we, one we were able to get back. So two fumbles, one by Ethan Nation, one by Chubba Purdy, and an interception. It's not good. Not going to win you games, not in a, not against a team like that. Bad play calling. I, look, I understand that Marcus Satterfield does, did not have starters for most of the season. They just went, man, 
Ramir Johnson, uh, Marcus Washington, uh, Isaiah Castaneda, Garcia Castaneda. Um, I can go down the list. I understand. Still does not make up for the clunky. There's, ne- there, there's not any rhythm. It doesn't make sense. And I also understand that our quarterbacks are terrible. Man, we had over 30 turnovers this year, and almost all of them in, from the quarterback position. And here's the thing to think about with that. Three different quarterbacks play. All three of them turn the ball over multiple times. That's on coaching. Who's the quarterback coach? Marcus Satterfield. Marcus Satterfield is the quarterback coach. If anyone should be really zeroing in on that position, getting his quarterbacks in the right place to make the right plays, getting them comfortable, simple passes, running the ball. But instead, we'll run the ball, have success, and then go away from it. And I realize you cannot run the ball every play. I understand that. But there was never any rhythm, ever. And we we are terrible on the edges, horrible. Our tight ends don't block well. Our receivers are young, don't block well. And so we throw wide receiver screens for no gain or a complete loss of yardage. And instead of running the ball up the middle, this game for whatever we're trying to, I don't know if they felt like um, Iowa is not good on the uh, on the perimeter, and that's why they kept trying to run the ball. With why? Why? And I know that I know that Ben Scott did not have a good game. I know that. I watched him get blown up multiple times. But man, so play calling atrocious, but I expected it. All right, here's something I want to I want to hit on real quick. Um in in if you remember in the game we had a timeout that we had to take because it, there was they were going to try to kick it. They were going to try to kick like a 60-yard field goal and I was on the stream going they're not going to try to kick. No, there's no way fourth and four basically half field are you they they're definitely not going to try to kick a field goal right now. There's no way. And they end up having to call a timeout. Tristan Alvano didn't get out there because it was the play clock was winding down. And so Matt Rule was asked about it. Hey, tell us about that that timeout. Having a waste of timeout. And he said, Well, we were gonna fake, we were gonna do a fake kick. That's probably outside outside of clock management, that's probably the first thing for me red flag with Matt Rule that I'm like, what? I understand that I'm not a coach. I understand I'm just a fan. But you make a lot of money. And you're, there's no nobody in the right mind, the way the wind was going, the direction that you're going, nobody was thinking that you're going to fake a field or kick a field goal. 60-yarder into the wind? Nah. You're going to fake a field goal? Luckily, Tristan Alvano didn't get out there in time, so they had to eat, a, eat the timeout. Now, I say luckily, because they were gonna, they had called the fake field goal, so they were going to run it. But instead of t- calling timeout, just eat it. Just completely eat it. Take the penalty, take your five yards back, and punt. Now, Brian Buscini, that's the play where Brian Buscini kicks it, punts it, and they get it within the one. So it worked out. But that scares me a little bit, man. Overthinking, pressing, trying to make things happen. And, and, and hear me, there are times you have to make things happen. But against Iowa, they're waiting for things like that. 
They are content to play their game and wait for you to mess up. I said it all throughout the stream. Patience, patience, patience. You have to have it with them. So that brings me to game management. I just don't know. I, I don't think they know how to run the hurry up, which I understand that they're probably not comfortable running the hurry up because we've had multiple quarterbacks. They turn the ball over, blah, 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 blah. But it takes way too long. Way too long for them to get going. Under two minutes, they are so slow. Here's another thing. To end the game with an interception, this goes back to play calling and game management. You throw, you have no timeouts, 23 seconds left. And you throw an in route to the center of the field, trying to go to Thomas Fedoni, never sees the linebacker, throws an interception. You have no timeouts. You should be playing the perimeters, throwing to the perimeters to go out of bounds. Because like I just said, they are very slow to get to the line. Also, when you do that, you stand a very good chance of turning the ball over, which is what happened. Our quarterbacks do one read and one read only. They cannot go through progressions. Chubba Purdy was very, very antsy. That first half, he was he was running himself into tackles, and we couldn't move the ball because he was running himself into tackles. He was getting too antsy in the pocket. He settled down. Very much so. He settled down in the second half. And I'm not putting this on, on, on Chubba Purdy. I think he played a decent game outside of the weird fumbles. Both of them weird. And the one, he was never touched. But game management decisions, like, that's the thing going forward. And I'm going to have a video coming out next week on the good, the bad, and the ugly of the Matt Rule era year one. I am a Matt Rule fan. I, I believe that Matt Rule is the guy. I'm not I'm not here to, to bash on Matt Rule. It's, coaching is hard. I've coached not in a college level, but I've coached Pee Wee and I've coached high school. Like it's hard. It's not easy. But you make a lot of money to think through these things. And I feel like way too many times there's just things that just left you scratching your head, going, like, what? What are we, what are we doing? And as a fan base, we cannot get upset and go, get him out of here. But I think we do deserve the right because we've seen this for too long. The same things always happen in Groundhog Day, like, like we said, like I said earlier. But I want to know what you think. I want to know your thoughts. Hit me in the comments how you feel about the game. I know you're, I know you're upset. Can they still go bowling? Yeah, if there's not enough teams with six wins, they they have a chance to. I'm not going to go out and bet my house on it. They had an opportunity, and once again, it slipped through their hands the final seconds of the game. I think there's some bright things about this, and again, I'll be going over that in the video next week. But this stings. It stings a lot. And it's going to be a long off season. With that being said, if you got anything out of this video or you agree with it, you know, whatever, leave me some comments. Hit me a like if you would. Um, if you are looking for a place to just kind of join other Husker fans, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel as I put out a couple of videos a week. I try to get those out, at least two out. Sometimes there, there's more, sometimes there's shorts and different things that I put out, but at least two a week go out. And so I would love for you to subscribe to the channel like this video if you got something out of it. And uh, yeah, I hope we get the chance to go to a bowl. And, and if, if we do, I'll be streaming that game. But if not, I will see you next year on the stream. I'll stream throughout the throughout the off season. I will be putting it out there uh, when we'll do streams where we can have everybody kind of coming in as we continue to, to build um, the channel. So with that being said, thanks so much for watching. Those of you that were in the in the stream with me, thanks so much for hanging out with me. Have a great rest of your holiday weekend, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.